But before we talk about Niccolo Machiavelli, let us look at the map of Italy during the Italian wars. We see that the two major European powers have been present, Kingdom of France and Spanish Empire. Those empires have been related with the very close links, but at the same time, they are very, very strong rivalries, and their rival was mainly about Italy. In one of his letters, actually, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Charles V, wrote, The interests of myself and of my cousin, French King François I, are basically the same. We both want Northern Italy. And this quotation gives us a perfect example of how the political thought of the Renaissance supports us to understand the causes of the conflict. The conflict emerges not when the, the interests are different, but when the two powers want the same. Like now, many countries want their, their own, their same neighbors to be friendly nations, but it means for everybody different. Besides two great countries, France and Spanish Empire and Holy Roman Empire, we see that uh, the third territory of, of Italy consists of the several small states. Among them, the Holy, Holy State, Papal State, is only one. The other important factor of the emergence of this unique international system was the decline of the authority of the Roman Pope. The states and uh, the feudals, the lords of the newly emerging sta little states, they did not have any respect to the Rome, which it has deserved for many, many centuries before. And this disrespect and the emerging equality of the relationships becomes one of the most inspiring reasons for the political third of the Renaissance. And among those thinkers, Machiavelli is definitely one of the brightest. Classical tradition during Italian wars was developed in his work The Prince, an influential political essay written by Niccolò Machiavelli for Lorenzo de' Medici in 1513. It was first published, however, only in 1532, because the Roman Church did not like it very much. The Roman Church thought and said that the prince represents the very immoral, non-Christian approach to the international relations. Why? Because basically, Niccolò Machiavelli addressed to the very beginnings of classical tradition, nearly to the Fuchididus and the other predecessors. He brought the ideas from the ancient Greece, from the previous thinkings, and he adapted these ideas to his time, and he used these ideas as an advice for political practice. So, what Machiavelli wrote, and why it is important for the understanding of international relations? Let us take several quotations. The first, the Machiavelli writes, war should be the only study of a prince. By saying this, Machiavelli defines what is the main form of interaction between the states. For him, as for any classic realist, the war is a normal condition, not the peace. Be why? Because the states are always competing. Because the states can never get in terms, they can, they, can, they can be never a final solution. Every solution, every victory, or every compromise is only the preparation of another conflict, of another war. And that's why war should be the only study of a prince. The other quotations. The promise given, given was a necessity of the past. The world broken is a necessity of the present. This sounds very cynical indeed, but for Machiavelli it was obvious that any politician, any prince responsible for his country, for his state, must give any promises to the other countries and has no moral responsibility with regard to the others. He has only one moral responsibility, is to protect his power and is to protect the people who live in his country. And in the works of Machiavelli, we find the another maximum. Machiavelli writes that the prince who is favorable to theirs, those who live in the other states is unfavorable and is immoral towards his own subordinates. The other quotation, politics have no relation to morals, is very, very straightforward, and it is also related to what Fukididus said many hundred years before Machiavelli, nearly 2,000 years before Machiavelli, and what will be said by the classics and by the other authors of realist tradition in international relations. But to understand it better, we should not look at the ideas of Machiavelli, Machiavelli very primitively. Machiavelli was not a simple, cynical author by saying politics have no relation to morals. He wanted to say only one thing, that the politics are so important that one cannot approach politics with a normal, human 
attitude to the questions like morals, justice, humanism, and the other important things which exist between the people within the society. So, in work of Machiavelli, we find one of the most important concepts of their international relations and the approach to the international relations from the school of classical realism, the stride division between the internal and international. What is permittable and what is possible internationally does not exist inside of the society. And what is normal inside of the society, like morals or justice, does not exist in international relations. Where, as Fukididos wrote 2,000 years before Machiavelli, the only strength matters. Machiavelli's understanding of politics was based on the three major ideas. One has been already mentioned. War should be the only study of prince. The main responsibility of the rules is always to defend the interests of the state and ensure its survival. The promise given was a necessity of the past. The world broken is a necessity of the present. So if necessary, as I have said already, a ruler must be ruthless and deceptive while defending self-interest. So, in today's politics we see many times when countries complain that they were not explained before what, what the intentions of their partners. But we should also understand that it is always the work of the Maxim explained by Machiavelli several hundred years ago. And the third one, politics have no relation to morals. A responsible ruler should not follow Christian ethics. If states follow these values, they will disappear in the end. Thus, for Machiavelli and the likes, the morality and ethics is an indicator of that a certain ruler is irresponsible with regard to his power, his legitimacy, and people whom he is governing. Another great representative of the classic realist tradition was the British philosopher Thomas Hobbes, which lived in the end of the 16th and beginning of the 17th and the middle of the 17th century. It was a very, very difficult time for Europe. The wars happened here and there. The Great Thirty Years' War was taking place in the very, very heart of Europe around the Holy Roman Empire. The other wars happened on periphery. Russia arrived to the European politics with invasion of the Baltics by the Ors of the Ivan the Terrible. So, Thomas Hobbes, based on this intellectual and practical background, offered a justification of states by envisaging a stateless state of nature. In this state, human beings lived in a condition of war everyone against everyone. For, for Thomas Hobbes, this condition was the very initial and was threatening the very existence of humans. And according to the Thomas Hobbes people seek to escape the state of nature, to achieve personal security, and to find a solution. And the solution is to establish the state. In order to escape from this situation, Hobbes suggested placing all power to a certain sovereign state, which he calls Leviathan, a state authority or supreme ruler, that would maintain order and end anarchy. Without order, no economic development, art, knowledge is possible. It leads to establishment of a social contract. However, unlike a liberal tradition, Hobbes supposes that such contract was conducted not between individuals, but between individuals and the government. And this is a very important difference between liberal and uh, realist tradition. For the realist, the most important unit is the state and the government. For the liberals, this is the individual.